Welcome to Collective Podcasting right over here with Jerry and Christian. How are you doing today, Christian? I am doing wonderfully here on a uh, Saturday. That's when we're taping this on a Saturday after a nice long, long week of just work and just everything going on. But last week, uh, we dropped the first episode as of this uh, taping, which was last weekend. We got a really great response to it, Jerry. How was the response on your end? It's been going great. I watched it 201 times, and no one else even had to do us the honors. Oh, so that's, that was you. Okay. All me. <laughs> um, but thanks, everybody, for listening in. Um, we made some great progresses as to where you can listen to it. I'll get to that a little later in the podcast. But, uh, Jerry, you're... Uh, your Sing Till Sunrise event's getting really good. What's going on with oh, that? Oh, it's starting to get closer and closer. So Sing Till, so Sing Till Sunrise will be April 21st, which is a Saturday. Steinies Pub, 3 Hyatt Street, right by the St. George Theater. We have an anticipation about 60 people are going to be coming to that event so far. Definitely bring those karaoke voices. I'm going to be yelping the crap out of you for that <laughs> Yo. amazing event. And most importantly, it's going to Sunrise Day Camp of Staten Island, where we help over 70 kids suffering from cancer to go to summer camp for six weeks free of charge. Nice, nice. Uh, you raised how much so far? So, throughout the whole campaign of Sunrise Day Camp Staten Island for our Sunrise Walks event, we have about $36,000 so far. We're trying to reach 40000 by tomorrow. So, definitely get that donation bu- button on. And we'll definitely make that happen for Sunrise Walks. Yeah, Sing the Sunrise, April 21st. Let's, uh, let's get this stuff going. Karaoke. Yeah. Yeah. So we're starting out with a huge, huge topic that has been taking storm on the internet, on YouTube, across all content creators. Uh, uh, for those of you that don't know the name Channel Awesome, there's been recent hashtag going around on Twitter uh hashtag change the channel channel awesome has been played with issues ranging from sexual harassment mismanagement and what can be entitled as embezzlement i mean it's an know, encyclopedia yeah. of fucking up yeah so like you you raise uh ninety thousand dollars on uh indiegogo and it goes nowhere and when you get investigated uh you just you turn out a uh, half-assed project who knows but, uh, it's no big deal. Yeah. But I encourage everybody to watch our good friend V and Fizo series on the matter at the Social Injustice Warrior YouTube page for more details on that. But I want to get into this a little bit, Jerry, real quick before we move on. Uh, you read the uh, the encyclopedia. It's it's a big ass encyclopedia. That's book. an understatement. Yeah. What what is your opinion on all this that's going on? It's just a shame how when things are mismanaged, it just impacts so many people working together on something. Channel Lawson awesome has a very big staff, or did have a very big staff. So to see this happening and how it affects so many people who have helped even bring the channel up, now that's a shame. Yeah. It, it's a shame to really see that like go into despair. I started watching the the Nostalgia Critic in 2010. Uh, that was right after I became a big fan of the Angry Video Game Nerd. I saw their big battle that they had online. It was a friendly feud, which you thought was a real feud because that's how believable it was. And they fought. Right. And they fought at the Nerd's house. And they've been having an ongoing, like, fun, funny feud. They've been appearing on each other's shows. He's been... Uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd, who I would absolutely love one day to meet. Um, he's like my filmmaking like hero in terms of just going from starting out from just a tiny little idea to growing into this big thing online but that's another story but uh for the angry for the uh, sorry for the uh, nostalgia critic um it's just a shame because it's a lot of things happen he killed his character in 2012 or 2011 2012 just and didn't even tell anybody which that he is the character that brings people to the channel and you kill it and you just killed your uh, your whole fan base right there but uh i'm just gonna go through a little bit of the tumblr that was that was uh put up so much detail into that oh yeah so uh so things that channel awesome's management has pulled according to the change the channel folks so 
Uh, this was compiled compiled by one of the uh, content creators that was on Channel Awesome, uh, Mars Girl. Um, just they fired an employee who was working for them literally every day, including holidays, because she had to take off for surgery and then holding her severance hostage, uh, turning a blind eye to sexual harassment until it almost or actually got violent. Not compensating people for days of work. Unbelievable. Not providing food or water for people on their movie sets, which you and me can attest that's number that's number one key. You and you and I have just really in terms of film sets, really that's important. I mean I eat everything, but yes, it's important to oh, me yeah. at least. I mean you you ate that whole six inch six inch six foot sub on the last I was gonna say, do not underestimate me. But I've learned over time, being that I've lost weight throughout the years, I have to share a little bit with people, so I can emphasize. This is a big one right here, because I, I did watch their movie that they did called Boldly Flee, which was they had to try to force two of their contributors to do a rape sexual assault scene. It comes off a lot differently in the movie, because they, cause they changed it around, but it was uh, two characters, uh, Linkara, who has left recently, I think over the last month, he did a lot of comic book reviews. And the Nostalgia Chick, where they did a parody of uh, Star Trek. Linkar is a big Star Trek fan, and so am I. And they did a whole assimilation type thing. Spending $90,000 that I just mentioned before on a game show that they tried to do, which they promised everybody 30-something episodes. They only did like 12. Oh, my or 15, God. And... It wasn't even that good. They, it was like a parody of the old 90s, like, um, Double Dare, stuff like that. Uh, they bought a warehouse studio, not bothering to sound dampen it, which, I mean, you and me, that's those fuzz, it's those things we were talking it's about. It's one of those yeah. things where it's like, yes, we're starting out, but you've been starting out. Yeah, so you and me, we'll, we'll be able to get the sound dampening stuff soon, but it's just, you, you, you've you been around for almost 10 years, level of professional this is very low here. Uh, firing someone for making an anti-gamer gate videos, misleading videos in their in their queue, consistently changing scripts for anniversary videos are going to keep going. A general Tommy Wiseau approach to filmmaking. Well, <laughs> as a guilty pleasure to the room. <laughs> Well, we did watch that a couple weeks ago. Not informing contributors that they would be retiring the Nostalgia Critic character. That's what I just mentioned before. General, general mismanagement of footage. Losing footage. Stuff like that. Verbally assaulting. That ass just disorganized. Verbally, That's disgraceful. Verbally abusing contributors. Insulting and harassing female contributors. Shutting down entire sites without forewarning contributors. General misogynist, misogyny towards female talent. Management not being able to cite members. Randomly dropping people for not posting videos to, despite random rule changes. A general creepy and fl flappant approach to characters they wrote. Ignoring the existence and work of contributors who have been there, been there for years. Wow. Just... I'm, right. I'm almost speechless. I mean, you, you, you've, you've managed... I mean, not film stuff, but you've managed a whole team of people. Right. I mean, what is your opinion on this? When one thing falls through the cracks, and if you're failing to understand how that happened, it's just going to continue to escalate for more things to happen. Yeah. Without any type of repair on the one crack that you've done, there's just going to be an inevitability of more things that are bound to happen in the future and that's just a prime example like you just nonchalantly listed all of that stuff for what this organization has been through for any manager to even have a, some sort of complacency with that is a shame yeah um that i for what i was uh looking up uh reading a whole bunch of stuff because uh, V V Infuso's video wasn't the first time I heard of this. He was just the uh, well. I take that back. It, he he talked about it on Facebook before he posted the video up, and I did a little bit of research. And then his was like one of the last few things that I, I watched before for coming on. It's just general. It's either mismanagement or it's just blatant incompetence. And 
it could fall upon the CEO who is not Dove Walker, who is the nostalgia critic. Right. Um, because he's just the person that just runs the, or he just runs the character. It's the CEO that's doing a lot of this mismanagement and stuff. Um, but yeah, but uh, if anybody wants to continue looking stuff up, it's the hashtag change the channel. Do your own research. I mean, I'm not telling you not to stop watching it because that would be very bad. But I'm saying just use your own judgment into what you want to do because there's a lot of people that are telling people not to watch any of the Channel Awesome stuff any, anymore. Uh, circling back, the reason why Channel Awesome is even a thing is because YouTube in the beginning really cracked down on people's using video clips. And this was like 2007, right. 2008. So they just created their own... Uh, website just to get their own stuff up but so that now, was within like two years of inception on youtube yeah. as well yeah so now youtube is monetizing stuff paying people then it's a lot easier um but yeah but on a lighter note <laughs> on a very <laughs> on a lighter, lighter note, note uh our favorite i want to say pastime as a child was uh, mr rogers neighborhood did you watch welcome it? to the neighborhood did you watch it as of course a i did of course you did i would question you as a uh, 90s kid if you didn't watch it i know really but um there is a documentary coming out called uh won't you be my neighbor which is a documentary on mr rogers a lot of people don't know the things that mr rogers has done you just see his on his on-air character of mr rogers but he single-handedly saved like public access and you know all i saw clips to that as well yeah of how he was able to approach it and just his genuinity alone makes him so deserving to be recognized as an icon just the stories that i've read about him are just make you just want to ball up and just cry uh, at the things um i remember reading he got a letter from a blind from a blind girl who was a viewer who said that uh she was afraid that he wasn't feeding his fish on the show so if you notice when he would fed the fish he'd always say Oh, I'm feeding the fish. Just to uh, make sure that the girl that was listening in knew that he was doing it. Just general niceness towards children. And things like that, for whatever show you, anyone has on TV, it's hard to really put a specification on connection towards fans. So the fact that he's taken his time out to do that just goes to show that he needs to be a leader by example, which he is. The things that he has done for kids... Above and beyond just the Call of Duty. And just... I'm, so you're saying he made Call of Duty? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... I knew there were secrets. I watched him as a kid. Um, he was one of my favorite things to watch as a kid. Uh, on PBS. Did you watch any other show on PBS? Or was that just Mr. Rogers that you watched? Mr. Rogers 24-7. No, no. Only in promotion to this podcast. Um, I forget if Bob Ross was on PBS. He had to have been. Okay, he had to have been. And I watched him, and I watched another drawing a drawing show for kids called Pappy's Land. I don't know if you remember that. Vaguely. 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 Yeah. Vaguely. I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you the video afterwards. Um, but yeah, Mr. Rogers, I, he died of stomach cancer. Right. Which is my biggest fear, because I have lots of stomach issues. But he's just a generally nice guy, and he was like your, 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 your uncle, or like your visiting uncle that came every day just a good half an hour just to... I see look at me, I'm breaking up a little bit just, just thinking about it. But uh Yeah. Christian, I'm about to hug you right now in comfort. Speak speaking of kids. <laughs> Toys R Us. <laughs> well now that's how you segue. Oh god. So we have a couple of things we want to talk about, Toys R Us. Uh, I've never seen Jeffrey the Giraffe so much in my life. <laughs> so, so Toys R Oh, you gotta love it, Jerry. So Toys R Us is close or close as of this as of time we are uh recording this it's either closing or it has closed and um it could be a number of factors um what do you think before i get into all the all the articles that i pulled up well i was gonna say you mentioned? did use the work there yeah i did i did i worked there for about a year which means it's your fault mm -hmm. i worked there <laughs> back in 2015 2016 <laughs> i worked there part-time I mean, I can't, I don't want to badmouth anybody because they might be listening in, 
but uh but he audited everyone oh yeah no no <laughs> uh, i mean it, it was it was it was my, my experience was was half and half with it just because you know i, I don't do good in retail but i, I don't i'm not really a, i'm i am a people person but i'm not a people person where you get yelled at every five seconds because uh you don't have an item exactly i mean i could tell you a bunch of stories people coming in asking for um for like baby carriages because i worked at a toys r us babies r us so a baby carriage and you call to the back and they don't have an item now i have an interesting question as you're explaining so yeah. when you were there for the time being did you feel like they had a future to sustain themselves or did you kind of feel like there was a there was no trajectory for them to exist as a company uh no i didn't i didn't feel like they had much because the place i worked at actually closed the toys r us out in new dorp where i worked at closed for a long time right and then they came back and then i started working there but you you had the sense that because when i when i was working there the toys r us in times square closed for a couple of months like and that's a big deal and then they reopened again after a couple of months later and then uh, it was just a sense of like yeah something it's a sinking ship but um i just didn't know how long sinking ships usually take decades or as long as that is or as long as the titanic but there was an article i was reading that said that the problem that toys r us is closing is not because they don't have enough money coming in or whatever it's that people our age millennials um are not having kids that's definitely one thing and it's the and it's the problem is is that when you don't have kids people don't want to buy toys and it's I think it's I think it's also the problem that there's so many apps on phones which mm-hmm. kind of deviates from the in-person satisfaction of having like a toy in your hands. So when that comes about, like you 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 can see it yourself. There is kids younger and younger having access to iPads and iPhones, whether they even have it for their own like property or whether it's just their parents and they get to like play with it for a little bit. That's also a disparagement towards the general toy industry. I could tell you, the time I worked there, the biggest buy um, at the time, because uh, when I worked there, I, I can name a whole bunch of big items that that people bought. Um, when I, uh, it was the Hatchimals, the Pop figures. Those those are big. Those are still big today. Right. Um, I don't get it. I don't understand the Pop figures. They're just big heads. They're kind of like um, bobbleheads, I guess, but you keep them in the box. Those are good for your office desk if, if you have one. Uh, a lot of Star Wars stuff. Because I, cause, uh, I was there for the very first Force Friday. Oh, really? Yeah, I, oh my god, it was. I That was actually my third week of working there. I was going to say, because that's when like Star Wars came back for yeah, what it was. Yeah, it was uh, it's September. They had the very first Force Friday. And I worked there, and it was just, oh my god. It wasn't, uh, well, I'm, I'm over-exaggerating. It, 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 I thought it was going to be a nightmare. Nobody really came in to buy Star Wars stuff. Or, or I just missed it. Right. Um, Christmas time, had a lot of people coming in. Um, late night. Like, I don't know who comes there. Who comes to a Toys R Us at 1 in the morning? You Tell never know with people nowadays. I know. But uh, a lot of theft. The people who work there. Of, we had a lot of theft, too, there, too, which, which was funny. Uh, the funny theft story I have was who, who steals twelve boxes? <laughs> oh I no! I say twelve. Oh, no. I don't think you told me this. No, no, twelve boxes of diapers. Really? I no no. Think about that. Think about that. Now you have was it twelve boxes? I wish there was things? video for my hand gestures as yeah. you said that. Just just just. Just think about it. You have to open up the boxes and take out all the diapers. I had people come in that would um, buy, that would try to steal um, uh, a baby formula. Because that's good with uh, mixing with the uh, drug and stuff. But I'm, I'm trying. This is supposed to be a positive thing. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm getting all negative here. But KB Toys is coming back in place, or they're trying to come back in place of Toys R Us. Did you go to KB Toys? As a Actually, no. I've okay. ne- I I don't think I've even stepped foot in the KB Toy Store. There were two. But I'll do it for Toys R Us. There were two. There was one in New York where the Dunkin' Donuts is, was. Gotcha. Yeah, and then there was one in the mall. 
I vaguely remember the one in the mall. Yeah. I, I don't I, remember the New Dorf one. I used to buy all the wrestling figures from there because they were cheaper. Um, I knew you'd have to come back for a reason. Oh, yeah. But there's a Toys R Us tycoon. There's a toy tycoon is leading a crowdfunding effort to save the Toys R Us brand. And I found this on uh, on uh, the New York Post, which is very, very funny. I don't know how much money they raised so far. I think they are. Well, the goal is... Um, is his one billion dollar goal, but as as the time of this article, which is I want to see if I can timestamp this, March twenty third, it raised over thirty five thousand dollars. Okay, so when's the goal going to end, or is it ongoing? Uh, it's ongoing, and it has over eleven hundred contributors on at an average thirty five dollars to buy the bankrupt chain. It's, and it's uh, pouring a hundred million dollars into the buyout bid, and another hundred dollar thousand dollars from investors. Oh wow! That's very interesting. I mean, for you're in that you're obviously you're in that crowdfunding, uh, right? Uh, like I do more peer to peer fundraising, yeah. and that's a good start, being that it started on March twenty third. Uh yeah. Uh, what's the other thing I came up with? Uh, uh, KB Toy. Okay, so KB Toys. Uh, it's not going to be a store per se, as in like they're not going to open up like all virtual the reality. Yeah, no, it's going to be virtual. <laughs> it's going to be more of um, like pop up stores. Okay, well, pop up stores are usually more trendy. Uh, well, especially now. With that kiosks. And they're going to see how that goes, and maybe they'll open up a a store to begin with in terms of like. A permanent store. But right now, they're going to do pop-ups. Hey, look. I think Toys R Us got bailed out once before. Yes. Yes, they did. They'll probably be bailed out again. I I love Toys R Us, so it's like I kind of wish that – hope I kind of hope that they come back. Just right. because, you know, uh, buying video games from a video game store is nice, but a lot of times you want other things as well. Yes. Especially we, we're at that age now where our friends are having kids now, so – uh, we we want to be able to buy some stuff for them, and it's and it's. So when they have kids, we have to live more like kids. Of course. Uh, so yeah. So. Uh, looking through the post for Toys R Us, I found these. Uh, I found these articles that I want to read off and maybe get your opinion since you're quirky. You're a quirky guy, of course. People that don't. No, know I'm you. actually not funny at all. You're not funny at all. all right. Nope. But uh, your quirkiness, Jerry. <laughs> I know our uh, friend, our friend Joe, told you to calm down on the quirkiness. I take all fan requests, by the way. Which, which, as I say to you, I'm going to turn up the quirkiness. So, for those of you that read the post, or get Thank the you post, for saving my career, by the way. You know, those of you that have access to the New York Post, or those of you that are just... Or those of you that have these R types of articles in your newspapers, they're called the weird but true articles. And I'm going to read off a couple to you. Jerry, and I know you're going to laugh at a bunch of them. Oh, but boy. But I, I want your opinion. These are these are strictly uh, fun. Fun and uh, funny, and some, some of them might be... Let's like see that. how much I can mislead him as far as for which one he reads. So, Jerry. Yes, sir. Here's the first one. So, Jerry, you want to try a seafood diet? C as in the letter C. A Florida restaurant opened this week with a menu that features only items that begin with the letter C. Sea House in... I'm not even going to try to pronounce what this is. Serves up everything from cheesecake to champagne to, I don't, again, I don't want to read this word because I can't spell it. Says owner. She also sells crab cakes, ciabatta, crudo, and dozen other alphabetically specific snacks. That's fascinating. We'll put it that way. Would you go to something like that? I definitely would. Of course you would. Not cool beans. A Kansas mom says she accidentally got her kids high on a powerful hallucinogen, PCP, because she thought it was vanilla extract. (laughs) The unwitting woman from Kansas City has made French toast for her teen and two infants when they started tripping out and had to be rushed to the hospital. That is amazing. She said a relative, relative druggy ex may have put the angel dust in the bottle. I'm drinking to that right now. What's your opinion, Jerry? I don't have an opinion on that, only because it just speaks for itself, the madness of that. Now, 
getting off track real quick, there was a story uh, that happened to my one of my family members' neighbors. They had I they had uh, Gatorade, blue Gatorade. Okay. Next to uh, Windex. Ooh. And they accidentally drank the Windex by accident. Oh, um, so they so, so they, they were the Tide Pod the, inventors. So they then. had to rush her to the hospital. I remember it was it was I had to have been ten years ago. This okay. Was, this was during one of the holidays. This might have been like. Uh, Mother's Day or something. It was the big holiday. It was like either Mother's Day or Father. One of the small ones. That's just crazy. So here's another one, Jerry. She wasn't loving it. A Wisconsin woman got so mad, a McDonald's worker screwed up her order that she threw a bag of food at her and was tossed in jail. I'm not going to say the woman's name. Allegedly burst into the restaurant in Glendale and shouted, I, di- I didn't order no sausage biscuit and hit a worker with with the bag she also pushed a 17 year old employee into a piece of equipment according to cops who charged her with disorderly conduct i bail her out and and felony child abuse well i'll go back on my word on that a little bit a little bit a little bit jeez jerry i'll reduce i'll reduce it to a misdemeanor jeez jerry get a shrink a German man barged into a police station to ask cops for help breaking up with his girlfriend the 34-year-old told the, I, don't even, I can't even pronounce this this name, he had grown apart from his sweetheart and needed advice on how to call it quits. The female officer sat him down and listed several opinions. Oh, God. Now, Jerry, as a ladies' man. Oh, oh yeah. Where's the air quotes on that? As a ladies' man, Jerry, what's your opinion? That's just mind-boggling how something like that could just happen. Right. Just the way things, like, lead up on it. Hey, right, Jerry, here's the big one. Oh, boy. Pornhub is giving free membership to residents in cities with sexually goofy names, including Horny Town, North Carolina. They should have done that already. That's F- just my opinion straight up. Effing o- o- Austria in three-way Virginia. Cities such as Balls Creek, Nova Scotia, Climax, Michigan, and Hooker are also in luck. Too bad Staten Island doesn't have a porn-specific name. Because <laughs> we know a bunch of people, I don't want to say their names, and don't say their names, Jerry, I would love that. That was weird, but true. You're okay, I didn't say your name. I'm sure, no, I, <laughs> I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that next time I'll find more, because you got a kick out of it when I told you about these articles beforehand. But I didn't ask you for your opinion. The PCP one was so great. Oh, yeah. But, uh, of course, Jerry. I mean, what what else? What what, what else would you say? My, my, my favorite is probably... You know what? I'm going to write my own, and then I'm going to read mine to you. <laughs> we'll see which ones are fake news. But my favorite... Which one do you think would happen to one of our friends? Oh, the my McDonald's God. The McDonald's one, probably. The McDonald's one, probably. Give me five more seconds to think of an answer. I don't know about McDonald's. Okay. Okay, the so PCP I, one with my other group of friends I, would I'm be gonna, interesting. I'm gonna give her. I'm gonna give her a shout out. Okay. I know Danielle, our friend Danielle, would love the seafood restaurant one. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, just because she, I can she, easily see that. Because she she would just get a kick out of out of the, the name. Uh, but yeah, McDonald's one. Uh, yeah. So uh, and probably the PCP one. She 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 would find a kick out of it too. Because I think we want to all try the PCP. Oh one. yeah. No. Wait, did that, was that one? They were making French toast or pancakes? Ah, oh, it was French toast and not pancakes. Ah. Uh, sorry, sorry, Joe. I was gonna say we couldn't shout him out enough. Mm. All right, so. Uh, so we have a goal with Joe. Yeah. And our, I'm gonna go on a tangent. Joe, our friend Joe. So Blanton. we're not going to have Joe on as a guest mm-hmm. until he gets requested enough to come on the yes. show. So if everybody, if you want to hear from our friend, well, I think we're going to have to tell more stories about Joe as the podcast goes along. Yes. Along. But if you guys know uh, know Joe, and we'll get to more Joe stories as the stories go along, because they're just not they're just so easy to tell. He's going to become like a, a like a myth on this show. Because the last podcast, people were asking me about who is Joe, because you mentioned him. People are going to be asking this time. I've known gonna, him for ten years, and I've been asking about him. He's going to be our mascot. I'm telling you. But for right now, we have more to come. Uh, right after this commercial break from our sponsors. So, Jerry. Yes. You like Italian food? Absolutely. Oh, my God. I love Italian food. I took my mom to Da Piera 
last week or two really? weeks ago. Really? And she absolutely loved the My food. mom wants to take me somewhere, too. Where should I go? Well, you should go to Da Piera. It's on 1970 Victory Boulevard on Staten Island. You ring, we bring authentic Southern Italian food. Go there. You'll feel like home. They'll make sure that you are well taken care of. And tell them Caputo Collective and Christian Caputo sent you. Sounds great. I'm going to call my mom right now. Yeah, we're back, Jerry. Finally. How, how you feeling? Good? I'm feeling great. Feeling good on the second I feel day. like there's so much pressure on me right now oh, yeah, because of Facebook Live. Of course. You bastards. Of course. Well, uh, Jerry spoiled it. We're on Facebook Live right now as a preview for all the viewers. I want to preview the second episode. Um, so, yeah, Jerry. So, uh, what is... Uh, what's, what's on the agenda now? Oh, yeah. So, uh... Fans. Now, way to answer your own question. Yeah, fans of the Infinity War uh, mm. trailers. That's what we talked about last week. Fans, there's a fan petition for Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye character being, yes. to be included in the Marvel. That's movie. gonna get interesting. Yeah, I just find it so stupid. I find it so stupid because, as a filmmaker myself, why if if I choose not to show something, yeah, in the trailer. That means I chose it for a particular reason. Exactly. It's you I I don't want to uh, break my integrity when it comes to um, when it comes to the uh, to the film. And plus, there's always going to be like a strategy behind yeah. it too. It's my it's it's my artistic view. Um, you don't know what his story line is in the movie. It could be really important, and they don't want to spoil it. Especially something that you've been building up for 10 years. Oh, yeah. Um, you, you, you've seen a lot of trailers, Jerry. And there's a lot, a lot of... Not a lot of stuff is shown in the trailers. Of course. Especially something like this, so massive. And, yeah, I just find it just, you know, so so stupid. And it's getting a lot of traction. Thank you, Change.org. Yeah, what, what, what's your opinion, Jerry? You know what it is. The people speak, it's fine. And it's always good to see where fans come from, so I have to give them credit to see what can happen from that. But at the same time, you gotta call out the BS when the BS needs to be called out. And that's where it does get ridiculous. Yeah, like, yeah. you can't always have your way. Yeah, well, we can't always have your way. And it's just, look, he's a great character. He really came into his own in Age of Ultron. Yeah. Because he was kind of misused in the first Avengers movie. He was more like a brain-drained... Brain-drained brain control drone and then the second one he really came into <laughs> yeah no, they really came into their into their own um there's times with superhero movies when you actually hear out the themes you're just like this is really stupid until you pay 20 dollars for it in oh, the of theaters of course. um also fan petition they want Mer fans want for meryl, meryl streep right meryl streep fans want meryl streep to play princess leia in episode nine I mean, she is an icon. She has the resume. I could see it. But same aspects as the Jeremy Renner. Yeah. Um, the whole plan, their plan was, was episode 7 was going to be Han Solo's movie, Harrison Ford. Episode 8 was going to be Mark Hamill's movie, Luke Skywalker. And then episode 9 was going to focus more on Princess Leia. And her character offering is going to be a big yeah. send-off. And they're still going to find a way to send her off pretty good but um i don't know it's 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 she's a great she's a great actress meryl streep i feel like she's always up for an oscar <laughs> never wins it's just it's, it's the ongoing joke she's now. getting nominated yeah. now um yeah as we speak there's there's movies she hasn't been in yet that she's up for she's up for for, an oscar for her 2021 release oh god but um uh she would completely look the part completely i that would just be perfect for that no cgi no, no photoshop no. see that's the other thing was they were saying only like, for our like, faces you need it yes yes <laughs> i mean have you seen this face um no it's actually on my camera so i don't see yours okay. thank god okay. no. <laughs> but um the funny thing is is that for for princess leia for carrie fisher uh, they they did CGI her in Rogue One, 
as the young character. Right. I and it's and it had that uncanny valley look to it that just creeped me out. I mean the 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 one that they did in uh, Rogue One for um, uh, his name escapes me. Um, is it Christian Caputo? No, 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 no. Uh, his name is. Oh, right you, now. now, now you really have rem- to. No, I'm going to rem- give him a step Pe- back. Peter Cushing. There you go. Pe- I, I'm glad I, I motivated you, Christian. Thank you, thank you Jerry. Peter Cushing. They CGI'd P- Peter Cushing, which I thought was. He looked really good. Prince, the Princess Leia CG, eh, it, it was okay. It was okay. It still looks. It still looks a little video game ish, and I'm pretty uh, sure that. Uh, they could work on it a little more. But I wouldn't want a full movie. But I have to say, if it was a video game, would you buy it in stores? Uh, without Just say without, yes. Without any microtransactions. <laughs> without any microtransactions. That could be a whole other... That could be a whole other con- just thing. Um, yeah. So, we'll see how that goes. I know they're starting to shoot episode 9 June, July, around that. That's coming out. Uh, I don't even know what year we're in. What year we're in? We're in 2018, right? It's supposed to come out at the end of 2019. So we'll see how that goes. I thought that was 2018. Yes, yeah, so we'll see how Han Solo goes. <laughs> so speaking of uh, movies, Jerry. So Joss Whedon. Good old Joss Whedon. Who got broken down and destroyed. Yeah. After, after Age of Ultron. Had, uh, had to get a knee replacement and everything. Was the director. Was the, uh, was the director of the reshoots for Justice League. That's interesting, too, because, of course, he did the first Avengers movie, and he was really, like, coming into his own on that. Of course, he had his resume beforehand, but still, at the same time, for that movie, that was kind of, like, his pinpoint to take him to another level. Yeah. So, when when stuff like that happens, it's a shame, because you never really know what can break people. So, I'm gonna... I'll, I'll walk you through a little bit of the disaster... That is Justice League and the DC Cinematic Universe. So Justice League, so this whole thing started... You know we're going to turn off half our audience, right? right? The abridged version. The abridged version. <laughs> we'll get half of them back right. now. Well, we're, all the Marvel fans now like, yes! No, um, so uh, the, the, the abridged version <laughs> of this is... Um, is So uh, J- uh, uh, Zack Snyder... Yep. Uh, who... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a lot of shit for this, Jerry. Who I don't think is that good of a director. He to me he's a glorified. Hold on, unit. let's make everyone comment at you to see where the haters are at. He's a he's a glorified second unit director. Um, and I just think that he's just not that good of a, of a filmmaker visually. And eh, he's okay, but when when you start doing, um, when you start talking about Batman and having like rape. With Batman, that's when you just turn it off. But he did Man of Steel, which is okay. Then he did Batman vs Superman, which is which is a complete disaster. I'm just happy you haven't yelled at me to turn this yeah. off. And then, uh, and then he did, and then he did something else. He oh yeah he 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 produced, he produced uh, Wonder Woman and he produced uh, Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad being one of the worst, and Wonder Woman being one of the best. And then he did Justice League, and Justice League went through seven or eight different scripts. Really ridiculous. Seven or eight different scripts, and it just it was just I couldn't figure it. I couldn't. I, but to you, have so many re- rewrites too. So many rewrites with so many different writers. I know. It's not even like you rewrite. No, a how could you be same, on the same page? I, I have no clue. So we we had fans are calling for the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League, which I've heard is unwatchable. But when you watch. The movie now that came out kind of it's not unwatchable i i don't get me wrong all of you dc fans out there i enjoyed justice league of for course. what it was i thought it was a good movie it does serve a purpose didn't particularly like the humor for batman one line i thought was fine for the humor and that was what's your superpower again i'm rich okay that's a good line that's a dry sarcasm. I, I definitely have to give you that that's dry everything else is like oh oh yep, that's the leg uh but anyway, so Joss Whedon comes out, and he talks about his experience on Justice League, and it was uh, it was an okay experience. wasn't wasn't uh, I'm gonna see if I can pull up the article without having any uh, audio and stuff. Bear with me. 
bear with me real quick. We got okay. some very good algorithms in place oh, right yeah. here. So he breaks his silence and uh, he, he he says it wasn't an easy task. Especially someone like Joss One Whedon. One way of putting it. Especially someone like Joss Whedon who has a very light view on comic books whereas Zack Snyder has a very dark and brooding. Okay. So you have a clash of styles. So he says it wasn't an easy task. Adding scenes to a complete, adding c adding scenes to completely rejig a movie where there's n where there was near enough done was one thing, but directing th those in time, I was given, made the whole process a, a daunting job. Mm. He also goes on to says the filmmaker won't get into specifics, but says Joss Whedon's Justice League is definitely different from Zack Snyder's Justice League. That again, this film. Is really both ours, and I'm sure that our, I could see though because of style. And I'm sure retro r respective versions would be. Uh, I lost my place. Would be totally unique beasts if they if they weren't this. I guess I know a lot of fans have their specific ideas as to what Justice League should be. Yeah, but when you're working with people who thought it would be cool to give Gal Gal Gadot who played Wonder Woman. To wear a bat suit in the final act. I honestly didn't know what you just said for yeah. a second. There was really only so much you can do. I don't ever remember Gal Gadot. I not Gal, Gal Gadot. I don't ever remember. Uh, I don't ever remember Wonder Woman wearing a bat suit. But okay. Um, he didn't. He went on. He didn't elaborate on what else the studio was looking to add. But he says I have some sights during my career that waxed back. Oh, he he's he's talking about the mustache here. Right. Uh, Superman still had a mustache when he was shooting uh, Mission Impossible 6. And the studio, Warner Brothers, wasn't Warner Brothers? No, it was the other studio that, yeah. he, that did uh, uh, Mission Impossible 6 told them you can't shave the mustache. So they had a CG in the mustache. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of for them on that. Yeah. We need a new look with uh, Superman over yeah. here. So... Not one Spider-Man with to a mustache. Where, as to where Justice League went wrong, he says, look, I love these characters in the studio. The studio loves a hit. Ultimately, none of us walked away happy, but it was but it was what it was. Not every superhero movie can be the Avengers. We're st we stuck gold with one, and I guess the world of DC is better suited for TV. I that I can agree with. The team exists in the DC. Me too. The team exists in the DC universe now. I'm not sure they'll ever reform, but we put them out there as to what comes next isn't up to me. And I tried something, and I and, and I tried, but something went wrong somewhere, and I guess the movie was a little too much Justice League and not enough of it. His assessment is pretty fair, though. And when they asked him about the Batgirl movie that he was supposed to direct, he says, I guess Warner Brothers weren't ready for boobs on the Batsuit, which I laugh about, <laughs> which I laugh about, <laughs> which I laugh about, and I call foul on, because... Oh, boy. Batman and Robin. Okay, okay. You I put, have I have to give you that. You put bat nips. You put bat nips and the, yeah. Okay, so my friend on Facebook Live, he says that they deprived us of the oh, black no. Superman suit. Uh that's a whole other topic. That's a whole other topic right there. Uh no, they did Hey they, Jimmy, describe my sexiness in, in three words. In, in in the chat room, uh my good friend David, he says they deprived us of the black Superman suit. Yes they did. They did so much. But that's another whole, a whole, a whole other story right there. But Batman and Robin, you, you have bat nips, you have shots of bat crotch, bat You're ass. just saying this so like nonchalantly. Uh, uh, Badass. Alicia Silverstone. That's played, a meme right there. Alicia Silverstone played Batgirl, and he had bat boobs there. So I don't know what, I don't know what you're talking. I don't know what. I it's 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 another one of those things. We'll never know. Will we see a Zack Snyder cut? I have no clue. I just I saw it last know. night. I don't know. I heard it's a mess, but whatever. Uh, so yeah. So uh, speaking of projects that are in development, we have a lot of people ask us what projects of ours are in development. So I'm chapter gonna, one. Yeah, so I'm going to go through a little bit of the development of uh, of one hundred. So future collective projects, our own little uh, cheap plugs here. So we're going to have a video game, uh, not walkthrough, but a video game like talk show where we just play the games it's called collective gaming that should be out in a couple of weeks hopefully as soon as i'm able to figure out the hardware which we tried taping last night but for some reason wasn't working right 
the layer of the Retromancer, which is in development. That's going to oh, be... Oh, yes. You briefly told me about that. Yeah, that's going to be hosted by my good friend Larry. Larry... Yeah. Larry... Lawrence I think you Ortiz, you yeah. both were saying that like last week. That's uh, cool. We're still we're still writing scripts and figuring out what to do. That's in development right now. Legends from Beyond, which I would love to get a cryptozoologist on to talk about just cryptozoology stuff because I'm so fascinated by it. We have an ad on Craigslist for it, by the way. <laughs> of course, uh, it's going to be a event mini series on YouTube that I want to do based on it's like a Twilight Zoney, just based on cryptozoology if you don't know what cryptozoology is it's creatures that don't exist in real life that people claim that exist like bigfoot right well we're not going to do bigfoot because it's cliche there's a bunch of there's a bunch of ones that i would just love to uh love to do um there's a i i would love to do something else this is also in development uh a tabletop D D uh show that we were talking about uh, not particularly watching us play D and D. It's going to be more. You have clips of us playing, and then cut to a more cartoon drawings and stuff with voiceovers and stuff. That's in development. We're not sure if that's. I would love to soon. do something like that to see how out, how out of my element I'm going to be. The big one, the big one, Jerry. You remember this? This is ten years ago. Ten years ago, we had the show on CTV Public Access, and it was big. It was big here on Staten Island. And I want to bring it to YouTube. Oh, no. The kitchen? Oh, yes, yes. Potential. How big of a kitchen? I'm talking. I'm talking to... Huge? I'm talking to my dad about this. He's all for it. I just don't know when. It's going to be the big one. We're going to bring back Caputo in the kitchen. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Caputo. Oh, boy. Caputo. Caputo in the kitchen. And, uh, yeah. And uh, it's going to Makes be... me want to go vegan. Oh, yeah. Makes me want to go vegan. Yeah. Caputo. Uh, we had a bunch of, uh, we had a, we had a, sh we had a run on CTV for about three years. It was about three seasons. And then we had a big, we had two specials. We had two hour long specials. One was a Christmas special. The other one was a 4th of July special. Both of them. I feel like he's pitching videos. his resume to me, yeah. by the way. Anyway. So, yeah. So there's that. There's that. That's all the, uh, potential stuff. You want to get into, uh, questions from the fans here? Oh boy, all those right, so, questions. And I'm sure you're going to bombard us with more of so them. So guys, so us. if you want to write into the show, you you put in uh you either message us on Facebook at Collective Podcast, ask us a question on Twitter, uh hashtag Collective Podcast or and uh also uh Pudo at, at the, I love it, Jimmy. Yeah. And um or if you want to email us questions, it's caputoproductions at gmail.com. Okay, so our first question is, what Star Wars story would you like to see in movie form, whether it be from Legends or Canons, and what would you like to see done? Okay, so, I know, Jerry, you want to see Jar Jar's big, Jar Jar's big adventure, right? I never even thought of that. Yeah. The big adventures of Jar Jar. Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> no, but, um, uh, okay, so everybody knows this. All my friends know this, actually. Shadows of the Empire. I would mm. love to have that. And I, I encourage everybody to go on YouTube. There is a fan trailer somebody made with Bruce Willis as Dash Rendar. And I thought that would be the best casting ever. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, that's, uh, that's one I would do for Legends. Canon, I don't know. The canon's a little iffy as to... Uh, it's been hit and miss a little bit in terms... Rogue One was good. I would love to see a canon version of Knights of the Old Republic. All sounds sexy to me. So let me let me ask you. Doesn't need question, to be long winded. What, what character would you want to see Star Wars? And don't say Jar Jar. Mm. But you had to say Jar Jar. Okay, Jar Jar. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry is the Jar Jar Binks of our. Listen, our group. when it comes to Jar Jar, we can't debate that. It's always going to be part of my identity, right there. So here's a question for you, Jerry. How do you feel about bringing back one of your band? band shows to raise money for sunrise as a question from the lovely joseph yes joseph a man person so i have a plan of doing something between july and august i'd love to do a fundraiser particularly a kill myers to see what can happen on that and for those kill myers people who are watching i know at least two of you staff members on facebook so you better be watching right now uh yeah of course um but yes, yeah, that's uh, that's my idea. What what bands would you would you like to see? That stuff is still in development, just like half of your ideas well, of what you were saying oh, before. <laughs> well, your, well, your personal wish list of bands. Hmm. Processor fusion. 
<laughs> I'm glad I'm glad I'm taking fan requests right off the yeah. bat. So yes, process of fusion. You listening? Yes. We're gonna be witnessing. Uh, but definitely them. I'd love to bring back some more of like the newer punk bands that are out. Radioactive material. Oh, they have gotta come back on that one. We'll we'll we'll, we'll get them. We'll the finagle them a little bit. Oh yeah, right. Kenny, log in, please. Can DC get itself back on track in terms of the featured films? I don't know. I do not know. I um, know the answer. I'm not going to tell you. Uh, I don't know. Uh, they should stick with... You know what I would do? I would I would stick with the TV and do once a year an event team up of just all your, DC, all, of all your characters and make it a TV movie. Don't put it on any one of their shows. Separate shows. Make it a big team up movie of just something that happens that needs everybody coming together just to fight this one guy. And then you can have your crossovers. Yeah. I think DC with movies or or what I would do to separate themselves from Marvel. You they do such a good job with the cartoons. Cartoon movies. Do a cartoon universe. People yeah, see it. I, I could definitely agree to People that. See it. And uh, here's a question for you and me, Jerry. What do we do? So, is the next film a sequel to the award-winning Black Sun film? <laughs> Can Red I Man guess who asked that one? Joe Valenti. Of course he did. Joseph Anthony Valenti. Yeah. So, what's your uh, what's your answer to that, Jerry? Well, we bound to make something happen soon. We're about 55 pages in, according to uh, one of our script writers, Chris, mm -hmm. uh, from last night when I was seeing him. So, that's looking pretty good, which we, have, we do have a goal of trying to get this to about an hour and a half. That would be ideal. It would, it would be so good if that could happen. So that's what we're striving for. Plans are to shoot during the summer. It's a plan. Uh, you know, plans can always change. But I, this, it's going to happen this time. Because the last time you tried to do a sequel. Oh, wait. Is it a sequel? Uh, I can't tell you. Hmm. It's not a sequel. Is it a sequel? I don't know. Is it a standalone? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not obliged to say for myself. Let's, let's have the fans decide. I, yeah, Screw it. Let's just have everybody you know who's watch, not us decide what our future is going to be. Movie, when you watch the movie, you'll see for yourself. So, Jimmy said sh Joe should play a dead body who is anally stuffed by mozzarella sticks. No, 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 no. That sounds so good, I'm going to repeat it again. Uh, no. So, uh, yeah, Jerry, I mean, look, I mean, Black Sun was a great film. I thought it won awards I can for the 12th Film Festival. But hey, look, I'm just a con man. That's uh, that, that's do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway yep con man's got a con but uh that's uh that's it for today jerry i'm gonna get into some plugs you want to plug your you want to plug your your, uh, your where can they find the sunrise the pledge all righty so you guys have to go to sunrisewalks.org slash si and what you're doing is if you're able to make a donation at any cost you're helping over 70 kids suffering from cancer to go to summer camp for six weeks free of charge. We also have another event that we're doing for April 21st, which is a Saturday at Steiny's Pub, going to be at Three Hyatt Street on Staten Island. Definitely come out for that. I'm going to make Christian sing. He better be singing something beautiful because that's the only way that I'm going to be able to come to the show. Mic drop. Oh, uh, real quick. We have a question that was just written in. Oh, boy. Um, we can't close until we hear this. So yeah, so on topic of Star Wars, what is your expectation with the solo movie box office? Um, <laughs> I do, Five hours. I don't. Later. I don't think it's gonna. Real quick, I'll, I'll elaborate more uh, on the next episode. Is uh, uh, I don't expect it to reach to reach a billion. Um, but I'll get more into that next episode. Lovely. Um. Anyway. I'm preparing myself. So, to find us, find Caputo Collective on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Go to Caputo Collective on Patreon, uh, where you can get the podcast early, uh, and a bunch of other stuff that we'll drop. The collective, the collective gaming, whatever shows we're going to do, we're going to do that. The, that helps produce this show, that helps produce um, just everything. So where you could find the collective podcast now officially? It looks like I'm about to do my homework right now. Instead I'm of in. instead of YouTube, is uh, you could find us on Anchor. You could find us on 
your phone. Just type in Collective Podcast on your phone. And you know where you can on, find on him, iPad. by the way? You can find him right here. Right in my house. And um, you can find us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, we're waiting on Spotify, Google Play, uh, and Pocket Cast. You can find us. And we should be on Stitcher soon. Should be on Stitcher soon, but for right now you can find us on YouTube. Within one week, we're, we're doing pretty good on that stuff. Find us on YouTube. Hopefully, get our views up. Watch the first episode. Watch all the other stuff that's on the Caputo Caputo Productions Facebook page. There, you'll find us. You'll find the logo. You'll find trailers. You'll find a clip from Black Sun. You'll find the trailer for that. You'll find Mind Vision, our, our first movie, and you'll find a whole bunch of cool, cool neat stuff. And that's that, Jerry. Absolutely. Thank you all so much for watching. And thank you for tolerating us on Facebook.